real estate financing, the secondary mortgage market. Banks don't have to keep the loans that they make on their books. They have the option to sell loans off to investors on the secondary mortgage market. After the loan is sold, either at a discount for less than it's worth or at a premium for more than it's worth, the, mer the mortgager may either make payments directly to the loan's new owner or they might keep paying their original lender and the lender will handle forwarding those payments. The mortgager doesn't need consent the mortgager doesn't need consent to the sale of the loan, but they must be informed of the sale per Helping Families Save Their Homes Act, part of the Truth in Lending Act. There are three major there are three major loan buyers on the secondary mortgage market. All three were established by the US government to make loans more readily available. By buying loans from the bank, the bank then has more money, liquidity, available to make additional loans. Federal National Mortgage Association, Fannie Mae, founded in 1938, focuses on conventional FHA and VA loans. More on FHA and VA loans in the government financing section. Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, Freddie Mac, founded in 1970, specializes in conventional FHA and, and VA loans. Innovated by implementing the securitization of mortgages, which Fannie Mae later adopted as well. Government National Mortgage Association, Ginnie Mae, founded in 1968 specializes in FHA low-income loans. After the 2007-2008 housing crash, Fannie and Freddie are now in the government conservatorship, meaning they are more or less run by the government under the umbrella of the Federal Housing Financing Agency, FHFA. Types of real estate financing. Real estate financing can be structured in a number of ways. Structures might include, but are in no way limited to, fully amortized loans. Amortization is the payment of debt in equal installments. Fully amortized loans, also known as direct reduction loans, are loans that are completely paid off when the last payment is made. All payments, known as debt service, pay both the principal, debt, and the interest of the loan, as well as any insurance payments and taxes due. This is known as a PITI, or the Principal Interest Taxes Insurance, usually homeowner's insurance, which covers physical damage and interest change over the, the lifetime of a loan, and are usually recalculated monthly. The payments on the loan are calculated such that the final loan payments pay off any remaining principal and interest, start discharging the loan and freeing the borrower from their obligations under it. Home loans and second mortgages typically take this form. The accounting for amortized home loans assumes that there are only 12 days in a year. This accounting begins on the first day of the month following the day that closes the loan. Borrowers normally pay interim interest for the period between their closing day and that first day. The first monthly payment is then due on the first day of the following month. Amortization tables. Amortization tables provide an easy, though somewhat outweighed, outdated way to calculate mortgage payments. An example of an amortization table might look like this. Annual interest rate, 15-year PI, 20-year PI, 30-year PI, 5, 6, and 7%. To calculate the payment on an amortized loan, the formula is loan divided by 1,000 multiplied by PI equals monthly payment. PI, or PI factor, is 
the first half of PITI, or the payments of principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Using the above table, the payments on a $200,000 loan at 5% interest amortized over 30 years would have a PI of $5.37 and be calculated as $200,000 divided by 1,000 multiplied by 5.37 PI, which would equal $1,074. That's some super freaky math here. Okay. Balloon mortgages. A balloon mortgage or balloon loan is a loan with an amortization period that is longer than its payment period. For example, a 10 year loan whose payments are calculated on a 30 year amortization schedule. This amortization period means that monthly payments for the loan will be lower than they would be if the payments were calculated using the loan's payment period. This makes the payments more affordable for the borrower. However, because the amortization period used to calculate these payments is longer than the loan's repayment period, it also means that there will be unpaid principal left over at the end of the loan payment period that needs to be paid for as a part of the final loan payment, a balloon payment, hence the name balloon mortgage. The repayment of a loan looks like a balloon, with smaller payments at first, the string attached to the balloon, and one big payment at the end, the balloon. Balloon mortgages are often refinanced, paid off by getting a new loan that replaces the old loan, to pay for the balloon payment. Second mortgages. Second mortgages or junior liens work the same way as other mortgages, except they are not the primary mortgage. They come second, third, or fourth, etc. They are often used to pay for a portion of the down payment for the first mortgage or for renovations. In the event of a foreclosure, the first mortgagee has the first claim on the property. Junior mortgagees have claims in the order that they are placed on their lien against the property. Junior mortgagees thus have a greater risk of not being paid in a foreclosure and often charge more for their loans for this reason. Straight loans are interest only loans. The principal is paid in one lump sum on the last payment. This is common in home flipping where the investor takes out a short term loan to purchase and renovate a property and pays the loan back in full once they have resold the property. Simple interest loans. Simple interest loans are non-compounding loans. This is a common feature of short-term investment, like, straight, like a straight loan. In simple interest loans, the debt is typically calculated daily instead of monthly. Purchase money mortgages, also known as seller financing or seller carryback loans. In this type of mortgage, the seller acts as the bank for the buyer. The buyer makes the mortgage payments directly to the seller, and if the buyer does not make their payments, the seller can foreclose on the buyer just like a bank would. To accomplish this, the buyer gives the seller a note and the mortgage, like they might give a bank in a more traditional financing arrangement. The seller is therefore the mortgagee in a purchase money mortgage. Wraparound mortgages are a way of structuring seller financing that wraps the seller financing around the seller's existing debt. In a wraparound mortgage, the seller has not finished paying off his or, home, his or her home loan to the bank, but wants to set up seller financing. To accomplish this, the buyer makes payments to the seller will then forward the buyer's payments to pay off their own debt to the bank. Typically, the buyer will pay more to the seller than the seller owes to the bank, so the seller makes some profit. Watch out, if the seller does not forward the payments to the bank, the bank can still foreclose on the property, even though the buyer has been paying. Note that 
a due on sale clause typically prohibits wraparound mortgages. Construction loans, financing used to pay for a property construction. Rather than getting all of the money at once, the borrower receives the funds from the loan in draws or stages. This protects the lender in the event of a foreclosure. Usually the loan must be replaced by a permanent takeout lender when the project reaches completion. New construction often comes with a construction warranty that covers faulty construction for some number of years after the purchase, stated in the warranty contract. Rehab loans. Rehab loans allow borrowers to include renovation costs into the purchase or refinance of a property. Rehab loans can be government-backed, conventional, or in-house financing from a local bank. There are a variety of rehab loan products, and as an agent, it's important to be aware that these options exist. However, always encourage your clients to reach out to a lender to discuss, discuss the specifics. Financing products change, especially rehab and construction loans, and there will be varying terms and arrangement depending on where the funds for the loan originate. Package mortgages. A package mortgage covers both real and personal property. For example, you might use a package mortgage to purchase both a physical restaurant, the real estate, as well as the personal property within it, dishwashers, stoves, tables, etc. Note that if you default on a package mortgage, foreclosure includes both the real estate and the personal property. Chattel mortgages. A chattel mortgage is secured by personal property only. These are often used when businesses purchase large equipment, for example, farm or manufacturing equipment. If you default on a chattel mortgage, foreclosure only impacts the equipment. Home equity line of credit, also known as an equity loan, equity line of credit, or an open-end mortgage. It gives a borrower a line of credit against the equity value in their home so that they can borrow against it if they see fit. Usually the HELOC is a junior lien, HELOC meaning home equity line of credit. Reverse annuity mortgage, RAM. A way homeowners age 62 or older access the equity that they have in their home. The bank makes payments to the borrower against the equity in their home and the loan plus interest is repaid when the homeowner passes away or sells their home. Fixed rate mortgage, a loan with an interest rate that is locked in when the loan originates. The interest rate does not change over the lifetime of the loan. Adjustable rate mortgage, a loan with an interest rate that adjusts sometimes over an initially low teaser rate or usually discounted rate. Usually adjustments based on the prime interest rate or lowest interest rate available at the bank. Uh, adjustable rate mortgages often have interest rate caps, but sometimes the interest rate does increase higher than the cap. In that case, the bank typically takes the excess interest above the cap and carries it over to the next rate increase as a carryover. If an adjustable rate mortgage has a payment cap that prevents the payments from exceeding a certain dollar amount, the bank will take that excess interest and roll it into the loan of the principal itself. Graduated Payment Mortgage A loan aimed at home buyers with predictably rising incomes, for example, doctors. Initially, the payments on the loans are adjusted down so as to be affordable and increase over time as the borrower's income increases. The payments made at the outset of the loan often fail to cover the interest charged on the loan, resulting in a negative amortization of the interest. Growing equity mortgage. A loan where any extra payments are credited directly to the loan principal. This allows homeowners to pay off the loan more quickly and save money on interest. Participation mortgage. A loan where the lender participates as an equity partner in a development project. Shared appreciation mortgage. 
A loan where an investor makes the down payment for the buyer in exchange for a share of the property or equity appreciation value. Blanket mortgage. A loan that covers several parcels or pieces of land. These are typically used by real estate developers or other investors. Remember that the buyers would be unlikely or unable to purchase a property that has an existing mortgage on it. In this case, the real estate developer's mortgage. Thus, although blanket mortgages cover several parcels of land, they usually include a partial release clause that allows partial payment of the developer's mortgage every time an individual property is sold and for that property to be released from the mortgage. This clause prevents a catch-22 situation where the real estate developer can't sell it any of the parcels of land covered by the blanket mortgage because they can't pay off the loan, which they can't pay because they can't sell any of the parcels of the land that are covered by the mortgage. Bridge loans and swing loans. Bridge loans are short-term loans designed to bridge the borrower over some gap in cash flow, for example, a shortfall in construction between stages of a project. Swing loans are typically Swing loans are a type of bridge loan that allows a home buyer to borrow against a new home that they're purchasing to carry two mortgages while they sell their old home. A non-recourse loan. <clears throat> a loan where the borrower is not personally liable for loan deficiency in a foreclosure. There's no personal guarantee the property is therefore only security for the loan and a deficiency Judgment is impossible to obtain. Important for real estate developers. Buy down or pledged account mortgages. Buy down or pledged account mortgages are used to mitigate very high interest rates that make loan payments unaffordable. You might see them in a market that has historically high interest rates. For example, the monthly payment on a $500,000 30-year loan with a tenant 10% interest is $4,388. If this monthly payment places the buyer outside of the lender's guidelines for lending, for example, 28% of their income, the seller buy down or the buyer pledged account can deposit a subsidy with the bank to subsidize the interest rate of the loan for some number of years. For example, if the borrower subsidizes, if the, borrower subsidizes the loan for three years, they would slowly be eased into the higher interest rate. First year being 7.5%, then 8.5%, then 9.5%, then finally the 10%. The assumption is that the buyer can either afford the payments at 10% interest or refinance to a lower rate. And takeover mortgages. Think of takeover mortgages as subletting the mortgage. If the seller doesn't have a due on sale clause, the buyer can take over the seller's mortgage. The buyer would pay a seller their equity, the difference between the selling price and the assumed debt, and receive the right to redeem title by paying off the loan. In a takeover mortgage, the buyer is credited the amount of the mortgage at closing, since they are paying that amount by taking over the loan and the seller is de debited that amount. There are three methods of taking over the seller's lien. Subject to, only the or original mortgager is legally responsible for the loan and is liable if there is a deficiency after a foreclosure auction, best for the buyer. Assumption of, both the originator of the mortgage and the new owner are responsible for the loan and any potential deficiency. The buyer and the seller are jointly responsible. Novation. The seller's note is canceled and a new note is written between the lender and the new buyer. Only the buyer is responsible for the debt and the seller is released from their obligations. Best for the seller. Okay. So that was real estate financing.